Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com. After several years, I finally made the investment in the DeWalt DW735 13 inch planer. Well, we love it, but let me walk you through some of the key features and controls on it so you know how it might work for you in your maker shop. Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com. We love this new planer. It is really a nice unit. And Fine Woodworking says that since this was put out several years ago, nobody else has even come close for what you get for the money for a medium-sized shop. Now, DeWalt makes different kinds of planers, what's called the bread box, which has two columns, but I really like this four column uh, unit here where you have four screw jacks here that uh, support and adjust the head up and down. It's 13 inches wide. It's got three cutter blades in it, and there's just some great features in it. I'm gonna walk you through that very quickly so you can make a decision if this type of machine and the features that it gives you might really fit into your maker space. Before we go any further, I wanna let you know that there's a couple of accessories that you see uh, fitted to this machine right now. This is pretty much factory, except we have this auxiliary in-feed table and there's an out-feed table in the back. And if you notice the out-feed table collides with the exhaust, the fan-assisted fan exhaust, um, but there really is any other place you'll see in here that that could really be. So I'm not gonna fault the engineers there. How many times do you have to transport this with it folded up anyway, or you can hold it while you're putting it back in storage. So that's not a big deal to me, but those are accessories you can buy. The second thing that is an accessory here is this DeWalt cart right here. You can check out in the video in the link above or in the link in the description below the video that we did showing how to assemble this and a couple of ways you can do it, where to place the lifter pedal. Uh, there's also all the dimensions of the cart in that video so you can see how high this is gonna sit, where it's gonna put the tables, all of that. But check that out over there. But let's go ahead and take a look at this unit right now as it is in some of my most favorite features, okay? Well, first of all, let's just start with power. Power right here is very intuitive. It's right up in front where the operator space would be. It's very clear. This is the power button with a reset right here. And I've got this unplugged. So if it's running and it's like this, of course, any good tool control, you can slap or bump against that and shut it down in case of emergency. And they've done a nice job. It's just right up in the front. It's not gonna get bumped easily, shut off and all that. So nicely done on that. The second thing here, is that this can be run at two different speeds. Now what happens is you have to adjust this, and I'm not gonna do it right now, because this should only be adjusted when the machine is running. And as you can see here, that when it's in position number one, it's gonna get 179 cuts per inch, whereas in position two, it's gonna get 96 cuts per inch. So this is good for dimensioning, position two, and position one is like primo number one, you're getting a lot more cuts. Now, how does the machine accomplish that? Well, it slows down the feed rate through the knives. The knives don't change their rotation speed, the motor speed and all that does not change. What happens is there's a little gearbox in there that slows down how fast the stock is going encountering the, the cutter blades. And of course, the longer the wood dwells and more knife cuts uh, in, are occurring, the smoother the finish. And so that is a really nice um, feature here. If you're doing first dimensioning, doing dressing of lumber, getting it ready for finish, you can save a lot on your machine and do some rough cuts and reserve um, those higher finish cuts for when you're down towards the end of finish on milling of your stock. Now here's another great feature I really like on that, on this, and this is the depth turret here. So as you can set the machine to cut uh, down to a certain depth, and I tested this. I ran some stock at three quarter, put a caliper on it, and wouldn't you know it, it nailed it. I'm talking about a digital caliper that showed 0.750 inches right at three quarter inches. They did a great job. Now, to make this work, this 
scale or the head has to be set higher than this and then it's lowered down to it. So let me show you how that works. If I bring this up and let's suppose I'm roughly, you know, higher than an inch and I've got this set at three quarters, when I bring this down, when it encounters three quarters inch, it's gonna stop. And it, matter of fact, there's a little play there, but you don't keep cranking it. You just let it stop right there. You don't have to lock it because of the whole thing it's set up. It's not gonna ride back up. It's now gonna cut it three quarters. As long as you started at a dimension um, or a setting on the machine that is higher than what's on the turret, you can bring it down to that. Now, that doesn't mean you set it right out there and run in, let's say a three quarter inch stock, a one and a quarter inch thick piece of wood through there because you're taking off too much. Uh, but this could be your final dimension stock that you bring it down to. That fact brings me to the next item on here, and that is the depth of cut indicator. Now, if you'll notice right here, there's a whole list of different dimensions and how much you're gonna cut off and the width. So if you're gonna cut off eighth of an inch at three inch, it'll let you cut up all the way to an eighth inch thick and so forth. If you were six inches wide, yeah, you can cut up to 3 seconds thick. If you're nine inches wide, you can do one um, sixteenth. And if you're 13 inches wide, the most you should be cutting off is a, 30 set, a 30 second of an inch. Now how this accomplishes it, if I put my hand in here, and of course uh, this is unplugged and so I wouldn't recommend you ever do this, but I wanna show the mechanism. There is a bar across the bottom right here. So when the, the stock first enters and it pushes that bar up, you can see the indicator rise. So in this case right now, it's saying we're cutting an eighth inch off of this, and that's not recommended for anything wider than three inches. So if I brought something down in here and I was trimming it, you can see your depth of cut, whether you're cutting off way too much in one pass, and this little indicator, which takes a few moments to familiarize yourself with it, but this becomes really handy, and of course you'll develop muscle memory of how much you should be doing, um, how much stock you should be removing at any time, and what the machine feels like. Now, let's bring you over here, and I wanna show you the adjustment crank. Now this is a little confusing to me initially because I'm a muscle memory guy and in certain lighting, you know, this says the arrow going that way is lower and uh, the arrow going that way is raised. Um, but in certain lighting and trying to get the light to hit right, I said, I gotta get this memorized. And the, the method that I came up with, standing where you're standing over in this area, operating the machine, envision uh, either if you've ever used a joystick in a, uh, a flight simulator or any of that kind of thing for a game, or uh, you have actually flown an aircraft that uses a stick or a yoke, you know that when you pull back or pull towards you, you climb, you rise. And when you push forward, you dive, you go down. Well, the same idea here. If I put this crank over here, if I pull the crank top toward you, toward, you're pulling it towards you, this unit's gonna rise. Watch it, see here, it's climbing. As I come back towards you over the top, it's rising. And conversely, if I wanted to go down, I'm pushing the top away from me and down the machine goes. So this is a really quick way. And this is a great crank, it's a surprise superior uh, crank and tactile fill to the bread box style that I've used before. And it's got a kind of a beefy grip on it, feels good on the hand, and you can really speed into position. Um, one thing I recommend is you keep a little bit of lube on all four of the threaded posts. Not a lot, you don't wanna uh, attract a lot of dust. Maybe something that's a Teflon type of uh, coating. Uh, I wouldn't use a lot of silicone. You don't want silicone on wood. It can cause finish problems. But now we've got that to this point. One other thing I want you to see, and then we'll open the top and so you can get an understanding of a couple other things very quickly. Here you have a very nice visual gauge. And here you have an indicator. Uh, so it's got some nice big print. It's pretty easy to get things in line. As long as you lower your eye down to this level here and look straight across the top 
of that indicator bar, then you're gonna be able to set down uh, to that level. Or better yet, if it's a common dimension size, you can use the turret on the other side. But this works out pretty nicely. However, you can check out the link above where we upgraded that using Wixie Digital Gauge uh, so that we didn't have to get down here and look at the right angle. We could see digitally exactly where it is and that display, when you see it installed, is set at a nice viewing angle for you as the operator. So that's about an $80 upgrade, but boy, really jumps up the utility. All right, let's look at the next thing. Let's go ahead and take the top off, which is accessible with the onboard uh, wrench right here. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, before we take the top off, I wanna call your attention to a few things. Number one, these are like little skid plates, so after you've fed stock through, and let's suppose you have somebody over here, or you're catching it, and you wanna put the stock back up, there's a nice rest area you can put right up on these metal guides. Um, and uh, that's a nice place to set the stock. Another thing, there's some nice embossing on this. This could be real tempting because of this, you know, looks almost industrial like a top of a step stool. It says right on the corners, embossed, no step, no step. This is not something to stand on um, or to let the little ones be around. You don't wanna do that to your machinery anyway. And then one other thing it does, just so when you're first using it or you've got an assistant in the shop that doesn't know quite where it is, there's a very clear Clear indicator here saying direction of feed is through this way in this way out that way over here where the exhaust port is all right we've gone ahead and we've taken out these four readily accessible screws what we're going to do now is just lift off the top and as you can see inside uh, we've put this to a little bit of use. We won't go into a lot of detail here other than to tell you there's a lot going on really quickly here. And we're gonna pull off all three of these um, red indicators to get you under the, the vacuum system. This is the cyclone fan or the, the squirrel cage fan, excuse me. Uh, this is the motor that runs everything, but it's also running the fan, air assisted and ejecting things out the side into a four inch port. And here's the pickup shroud that goes over the top of um, the blade. Let's go ahead and remove these and you can take a look. And there you can see the inlet to the squirrel cage uh, where the fan is picking up all the chips and ejecting it out of the way. This is very efficient. It's not gonna get 100% of, you can see there's some residues from an earlier job, but now you can clearly see the cutter head right here. And the cutter head is very sharp. I would need to actually push and do the release but it's triangular in shape. There are three cutters right here. They're rotating against the direction of feed. You always would have that with woodworking. If the direction of feed matches the rotation of the tool, it's simply gonna grab it, shove it through and jam or make a big noise and a lot of damage. So it's feeding against, shaving off edge and then putting it uh, into the ejection system, taking it out of the way. When it comes time to replace those knives or shift them a little bit if there's a neck, uh, you can use this tool right here, which fit into that. And notice there's a couple pair of um, rare earth magnets that allow you to grab onto the blade and lift the blade out when it's loosened. So that's a, a great tool and a lot of forethought by the DeWalt engineers, nicely done on that. And finally, at the back of the unit here is the exhaust port. And notice that it's a four inch. Now this is just an inner filter that is not meant to put a shop back hose. And don't waste your time thinking that a regular shop back will do the job, it will not. There is so much air coming out of this with the fan assist and amount of chips that can be removed on a 13 inch wide board that it'll quickly overwhelm a shop back and you'll end up with a big mess. So this is really only for four inch. If you have a machine of this kind of output and quality and uh, power, you need a matching dust collection system. It doesn't have to be a huge one, but it does need to be four inch uh, with a good collection bag, because uh, otherwise you're gonna have this all over your shop. So that is the next thing to keep in mind. Well, we think you'll really like this machine. Uh, there are several sources you can get them. Uh, you can get them from the big box home improvement stores. You can also get them from our friends at Rockler, as well as at Acme Tools. Um, 
Woodworker Source, and so many others that are available. And while you're at it, look for packages. So at different times, they may upgrade and provide uh, these tables included, or there's a package that has the stand, uh, if you can make use of that, or perhaps a different set of blades or extended blades. And there's some other cool accessories you can get, including upgraded blades from people like Infinity Tools. So. Um, I think you'll really like this machine. We've liked it so far and anticipate we will. However, I mentioned earlier in this episode that one of the things we really wanted to take care of was upgrading or taking a look at this indicator. This indicator is pretty good and it's clear, you can see it, but you have to lower yourself down here to get an even shot across there to take care of what's called a parallax error. Well, check out this video that we created for you that shows you where we install the Wixi digital planer readout on this machine right here. And you'll see how it's installed and how much we do like it. And while you're at it, check out this other video from our library that YouTube thinks is perfect for your interests. And so do we. Hey, until the next time, this is Dirt Farmer Jay, really enjoying this planer in my woodworking shop. Thank you.